you know that sports game that I usually watch? Oh yes, you like the way that they get into a tribal mindset over a pointless ball game and the inane confabulation that the broadcasters <laughs> had. That's right. Well, this week, they I have no inane confabulation <laughs> at all. They what? It was all just silence and crowd noise. It was really zen. <laughs> but what's occurring? You're going to love this. Okay, what? The, the one that usually does all that inane babbling, he said on Musk Social that denying human rights to people who risk their lives to find safety is the kind of thing that fascists do. Right, yes, and? And the government were all like, that's what we want to do. How dare he be so partisan? He's a sportsman, he should be impartial. Oh dear. <laughs> so, they got him sacked, right? <laughs> it seems like something that extremists might do. Right. But they could get a new presenter, because everyone else walked out in protest. <laughs> <laughs> well, cancelling someone because of their political views, it seems like something a fascist might do. Is it? What's that then? Well, you see... The only genus has a problem, in that the worker genus outnumbers them like an hundred to one. Yeah, population is power. So as they extract more and more of the surplus from the worker genus, the public services start to collapse and the cost of living rises and the workers get into paid disputes and become rebellious. Yeah, this is what I do get. Why do the workers insist on a fair share of ownership? It's them that does the work. It's them that has the power. Why do they get the profit? Why do the bosses get to own it all? Well, exactly. So what the owner genus does is they single out some segment of the workers' population and designate them as an official enemy. The what? They blame the imagined enemy for all the problems that are caused by the owners draining the workers' wealth. The public service is collapsing and the cost of living rising <laughs> and the unavailability of doctors and so forth. War? Well, look, in this case, it's the people fleeing war. They're called boat people or small boats and the owner genus constantly insists that <laughs> they are the problem. They blame the people fleeing war for overcrowded hospitals. <laughs> no one could fall for that. <laughs> No, but the threat doesn't need to be credible. The people won't think about it. It just needs to be stunning. An attention diversion. Oh, it's a magician's trick. <laughs> a diversion. They are quite attention-grabbing. Don't look at the transfer of wealth from the poor to the rich. Look at those people over there in that boat. <laughs> exactly. They remove all safe and legal routes for those fleeing and then point at the few people still trying, desperately on a raft, saying they are filling your hospitals and your schools. And people fall for that. A raft full. <laughs> they love it. It helps them to feel part of a tribe, like in your sports games. Oh. Here's a really good one. The owner class constantly complains that those fleeing the war won't stop at the first safe country they come to. <laughs> you are? Duh. Because that would be stupid. You'd have this great barrier of people at the border. <laughs> they need to fan out once they escape. But their media is owned by the owner class. So they don't even question that frame. They just accept it would be a good idea if everyone stopped as soon as they were safe, instead of fanning out and distributing themselves between all the other regions of the planet. <laughs> and this is why that inane man wore on the telly. <laughs> he pointed out what they're doing, <laughs> and they doubled down and censored him from talking about the sports game. <laughs> well... If you're not incompetent, it's a great tactic normally. This ape species is very small-brained and frightened. Historically, they have picked on all kinds of groups. The immigrants, or the unionists, or the queers, or unmarried mothers, or the handicapped, or those with different skin tones, or news reporters, or women, or judges, or <laughs> anyone, really. 
Just as long as it's a minority without the power to object. <laughs> <laughs> and ideally, really visually distracting. Then they can dominate the news media with stories about the inane man or imagined enemy instead of about the systems collapsing and the wealth being transferred to the owner class or about high interest rates bankrupting banks or about strikes in the public and private sectors or about the skyrocketing <laughs> cost of living and the shit in the seas <laughs> <laughs> well quite plus by promoting division between the minority group and the majority group they can create that tribal sense from your sports game and also a sense of crisis to justify the extreme laws. So, they say they'll have to remove human rights for everyone to stop this small raft full of people who will fill the last hospital places. Well, yes. They scare their base so that they unite against this imagined foe and continue to fight each other instead of the only genus. It's hard to imagine this planet getting through the decade, innit? Well, maybe. It can't last the century, though. We won't be here long now. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. How's it gonna end? Yes, the people back at home will go mad for it. They'll be subscribing just to keep up on new developments. They'll subscribe right now at starshipsd.com. 